Hi all and welcome to Southern Cross Amateur Astro where we're going to continue our video user guide for APT with a look at the tools tab. Now this is going to be a very quick video, it's just going to be an overview as everything on this tab has its own page in the user guide which will be covered in more detail later on. So let's get right into it to keep this short. So at the very top of the uh, tools tab you have a collection of links to various features of APT. Uh, I'm going to go down the left and then down the right. So histograms, which vary depending on what type of camera you have connected. Uh, graphs gives you a series of graphs you can put up to display what's going on around you. Uh, focus aid is either a standalone focusing aid, as it says, or can be used in conjunction with autofocus aid. Um, it's up to you which what you use. Bartnov aid is simply for using the Bartnov mask to focus manually. Um, I used to use the standalone program this is based on, so I'm quite happy to use that when I'm using a button of mask, which isn't very often nowadays. Uh, Autofocus aid, which is one which we'll be having a lot of details done on later on in our in-depth series as well as in here, um, simply because it's something that does seem to give people a few problems every now and again. Framing mask is something that's only available in the uh, versions where you have a key. Um, it's for setting up a framing mask so you can have the same view exactly every time. You can make sure the camera's rotated the right way, etc. Pixel aids, just a, an aid for taking, um, looking at the exposure you've got, your ADU, etc., for your image that you've done. Uh, CCD flats aids is exactly what it is. It says it is. It's basically for taking a setting up a imaging plan for flats for a CCD or CMOS camera. Session Craft is another one that will have a number of videos in our deep dive series simply because it covers so much. It is the brains behind automating your imaging session, control your meridian flips, uh, your session control which all your plans and everything else can be run through here as well as all the focusing routines. So that's going to take a bit when I get round to that one. Focus Crass is another way you can use to focus your camera, um, but it can be used in conjunction with Focus Aid as well. And if you have Calculate set, it will work over each image you've done, it will calculate, and you can see over the night whether your seeing is improving or getting worse, or your focus is going out, or whatever. Uh, Polo Align via PS, or PAPS, is plate solving to Polo Align your mount. Um, I have had some problems with this in the southern hemisphere, but I think I've found a workaround I'll go through later on, uh, but very handy to have. Up the top on the right hand side is probably the most important part of it all, your overall APT settings and your management for your profiles. That'll be several videos to cover what's in there later on. Um, magnifier, um, it does have its own section, but basically it simply is what it is, it's a magnifier. <laughs> Set focus mask, I'm not going to bother clicking on this because it won't do anything because uh, I haven't got anything set for focusing. But it's to uh, set the focus warning for temperatures and everything else, uh, only available in the full version again. Another one that's only available, available in the full version is uh, your lens control. And this particular feature on its own, I'll show you when, I get, when I've got my DSLR collect connected with a lens, it only works with a Canon DSLR and a supported lens. Um, this allows auto focus with the lens and that alone is worth far more than the half a euro a month you'd pay for your license renewal. I mean that is just, if you've ever spent time out in a cold winter's night trying to get your camera and lens focused, you'll know how painful that can be. Um, this takes care of it and I'll show you that one later. Definitely worth the money to get. Next we have DAV, which is a drift version of drift aligning. Um, you can use this to get your polar alignment or what I often use it for is a confirmation that I am polar aligned. So I might use uh, PAPS or I might do drift aligning in uh, PHD2 and then I'll come in here and only it takes less than a minute just to confirm that yes, I have got it right. Um, so that's something I'll show you later on. All of this I'll show you later on, I should say. Collimation aid um, 
if you have a telescope that requires collimation a Newtonian or an SCT etc um, this just allows you to set up a collimation circle in the middle and it will help you get your gear collimated um, I don't have one that needs collimation so I don't know how much I'll be able to show you of that planetary this is again something that only works with a Canon DSLR I don't believe it works with Nikons but what this does is allows planetary imaging via your camera um, if you have a supported model you can do it in movie style but uh, the main function of this is it records images direct from your live view screen so you zoom in five times on your live view screen and it will actually get images from that zoom in making planetary uh, quite doable with a DSLR checklists uh, simply all your checklists to remind you things to do extra devices covers your flats devices um, your flat panels etc and uh, GPS devices so we'll go into that later Indigo and Indy if you use a Raspberry Pi with Indigo and Indy you'll probably know a lot more about this than I do there's not going to be much I'm going to be able to tell you more than what the uh, written guide actually tells you because I don't use it so I'll leave that till later web cameras not for imaging as such but uh, for monitoring your gear if you're remotely accessing it you might be inside and it might be outside you can connect a web camera or an IP camera security type camera and you can actually monitor it monitor it on or off or keep it running or whatever while you're sitting you know, somewhere where you can't see your gear very handy to keep your gear safer and then finally down the bottom here we have the object calculator um, and this is for setting your details of your scope um, and your camera if you need to generally the camera area will be auto filled uh, so you don't have to worry about that at all but you can set your object size if you use an object from the object browser and you access it through the object browser it should automatically fill uh, I think every object in there has a size but if you import ones it won't have may not have the size so you might need to enter your own and of course your scope length and diameter um, this this is the reason I do a separate profile for each focal length I use uh, whether I'm using it with a reducer or not with a reducer with a barlow or whatever I set it all in here by having different um, profiles for the focal lengths I don't have to remember to come in here and change it if I change my uh, telescope or lens that I'm using it's all there if I've done it correctly and it doesn't matter if then if I change camera because this is, gets automatically filled anyway and this also provides details you need for your autofocus and everything else um, and importantly if this is not set, set properly you won't be able to plate solve properly so that's it for the tools tab um, so I'll end this one here wish is all clear skies I'm still waiting it's been over six weeks I'll get clear skies eventually maybe as a Christmas present but uh, take care everyone and I'll talk to you in the next video bye now